in terms of where where the entertainment was, I mean, we know I people are always stunned when I tell people that you know hundreds of years ago dwarfs were given away as gifts, right? That was we were kept in courts, we were part of the you know we were part of the entertainment that royalty had at their disposal because we would be living in the palace or the castle or whatever it was and we because we had been swept out of our miserable circumstance in life and brought to the palace or castle or whatever and uh, or we were just or we were seen as something less desirable so we were given to something and and so uh so there's there's the infamous court gestures right from years and years ago uh where uh Perhaps there was a miserable life there because that was what was expected of you, and you were living in a palace, and you know I can't imagine what that life was like. But uh, and so then, um, so that was that was pre pre most pre most things, right? That was kind of where dwarfism lived in the entertainment world. And then uh, independently, of course, there were people with dwarfism who never got swept up into that. That you can go back through the history books and find. And they were they did entertainment on their own, or they were writers, or they were poets, or you know they did presentations and things like that. And you just you you'd have to dig really hard to find them. The traveling circuses, right? The traveling shows, and that's again where dwarfism was seen as this entertainment notion of being presented uh, and seen uh, for the the sake of being seen. And you didn't have to do much. And P.T. Barnum, of course, was the world famous showman for that. So he he did that, and that didn't that didn't help things very much um, because it kind of gave people this notion that you were meant to be looked at, you were meant to be seen, you were a, you know you were uh, something to pay admission to go see because we're so rare. Um, and uh, and so he had he had a number of he had some of that and that kind of existed everywhere. In fact, my wife and I were um, in New Jersey once, and a carnival had come to town, and there was a guy at the front uh, of the sideshow, basically that was a guy with dwarfism, and he was he was an older, much older gentleman. But we, my wife and I, were dumbfounded in that. You know, it's 19, it's 2000. It was in the year 2000, one or two. And there was this guy traveling around with a sideshow. And then as you went through the sideshow, there was another woman in a cart, in a wagon with her little miniature house. She was from Haiti or somewhere in the Caribbean. And she was just telling us all about, like, like what are you doing in there? Like, get out. That's still there, um, which I find, I find a little disheartening. Um, but that being said, uh, television and movies uh, got got you know got popular, and uh, I think the first big actor with dwarfism that came up was Michael Dunn, right on Ship of Fools. Uh, he was nominated for an Oscar or for Best Supporting Actor, uh, so he didn't win that. Uh, and then uh, Hervé Villachez was the guy who ended up on Fantasy Island. That's been a horrible role because, I mean, he didn't know at the time. At the time, it was a big break for him. Uh, but for all of us on the outside, we all got to hear the plane, the plane, uh, in the way he said it, yelled at us. Because anytime someone saw us, they identified us with that one character that they knew from TV. Uh, so, so that didn't help much. Um, and then... I think uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the Gene Wilder version, had a bunch of people with dwarfism cast in it. That didn't help us either, because that's something we still that still carries through. You know, someone will see us and they'll say "Oompa Loompa." They'll start singing the Oompa Loompa song uh, out of the blue because we remind them of that. Uh, and then, uh, what came after that? Um, oh, Mini Me, uh, the uh, the. Um, the Mike Meyer, uh, Austin Powers movies. Austin Powers cast a guy named Vern Troyer. Uh, Vern is a guy that we've known for years through the Little People of America. He was an actor, always trying to find a break. This was his big break. I mean, shot him right through the stratosphere in terms of money and career and problems, issues too. I mean, 
Uh, he, did, he didn't fare well against the Hollywood Beast. Um, and so that didn't help us either because I got, we got a lot of mini-me calls after that uh, where people would just call you mini-me. Uh, and, then, um, and then it all went away. I mean, that was the last really stereotypical large role because no one says anything about Peter Dinklage now. He doesn't have any taglines. Peter Dinklage is in Game of Thrones. So there are no taglines in that movie. There are no catchphrases that he says. It's just a ruthless, like, terrifying, odd, like, very odd show, very strange circumstance of a show. Um, and then, of course, The Wizard of Oz. I forgot about that one. That was another one that, that was back, so that was kind of the bridge between P.T. Barnum and the stuff today was that Wizard of Oz one where they cast a whole bunch of people with dwarfism in one film. They put them all in one hotel uh, and then like the rumor, I mean like the rumor mill from that setup is, is rampant and, and vile and it just, it's, it's all debauchery and all of this, these wild nights and things like that, whether or not any of that's true, I, I don't know. But that, um, that set up the idea of the Lollipop Guild getting called Munchkin, getting called all these different things based on that. So each piece of popular culture that highlights a person with dwarfism ends up with this repercussion that everyone in that community will then hear of it. Mm -hmm.